Hey guys, Phil here. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, our channel is dedicated to sharing all kinds of information about Chinese tea and tea culture. Jen and I run an online tea boutique, Jen Tea, where you can find real tasting grade Chinese tea. If you'd like to know more about what's happening in China's tea market and with tea farmers and producers, don't forget to check out our magazine, Cha Ren. Both issues are now downloadable so that you can easily enjoy them on your tablet or whatever device while enjoying a cup of tea. You may have noticed that not all tea you purchase comes with an expiry date. Does tea expire? How long can I keep my tea? How should I store my tea? Does tea go bad? What about aged tea? These are the questions we are going to answer in this video. As usual, we share our guidelines and thoughts on the topic, but don't hesitate to leave a comment below with your thoughts or the things you've heard from other people. We're not laying down the law here, and I think sharing different voices can help fellow tea lovers see what's out there, weigh the pros and cons, and choose the best approach for themselves. When we get groceries like tomatoes or cucumbers, there's no expiry date, but they do go bad. If we put them in a hot, humid environment, they might go bad in a couple days. In the fridge, they may last up to two weeks. If we make them into sun-dried tomatoes or can them, you have yet another lifespan. Tea is similar to produce, but with some interesting twists. To make it easier to explain this topic, we'll categorize teas into three separate phases. Not quite as amazing as the six tea categories, but it'll work for our purposes. First, the shortest life of tea is once it's brewed. When the tea is brewed but not yet done, you may wonder, can I save these leaves and keep brewing them later? This mostly happens in Gong Fu style when we do multiple infusions. And of course you can! Actually, Jen and I do this all the time, especially when it's an oolong or a shen puar that could go for quite a long time and we're just taking a short tea break in the middle of our workday. Both the brewed leaves and the liquor can be preserved and enjoyed throughout the day. And if you want to save them for tomorrow, that's also fine. Unless it's really hot and humid, then you might want to tuck them into the fridge. Of course, this is not the suggested way to enjoy tea because it does reduce the aroma and change the taste. It's more noticeable in white, green, yellow, and light oolongs, but the impact of the taste on the darker teas like roasted oolongs, black, and dark tea is much slower. So don't hesitate to treat yourself to that robust tea that lasts for so many infusions on your tea break. You can come back to it over and over throughout the day until it's finished. Now let's talk about the life of the dried tea leaves, the leaves we purchase from stores. The end of these tea leaves is when they are no longer drinkable. For example, if they get moldy. But tea can last for quite a while if we store it properly. The biggest enemies of tea are direct sunlight, too much humidity or moisture, and odor. So be sure to store your tea in a well-sealed, opaque container. Green, yellow, and green oolong tea are better stored in the fridge for maximum freshness. Other teas are fine at room temperature. Though it's hard, if not impossible, to set an exact expiry date on tea, we usually recommend about three years as a rough guideline for the shelf life, assuming the tea is made with basic quality standards. There's also a prime time to enjoy your tea. For example, it's better to drink green, yellow, and green oolong teas as soon as possible. Of course, there's no rush to finish these teas in weeks or even just a couple of months, but it's definitely not recommended to take years to get through them. Many oolong teas and black teas actually taste better after a year or so and stay at their peak flavor for another year or two. However, these timelines only apply to teas made with the proper conventional process. Tea is a very lively industry where process changes happen all the time. I don't want to call it evolution or, or innovation as these words usually imply a positive change. Yes, not all changes that make it onto the shelves are for the better. There are many process changes simply aiming at improving the speed of output either by eliminating steps or modifying the most technical and complicated steps. Yansha rock tea, for example. If you bought a current year Yansha in July or August, don't hesitate to drink it now. Or if your new Yansha has an aroma that is so floral and booming, don't wait, drink it while it's still good. The taste of this kind of Yansha won't peak later. I just want to emphasize that the traditional guidelines for storage are for high quality, properly made teas and don't apply to all teas in today's market.
One of the questions we hear a lot is, why does my tea go bad so quickly? This is actually two different questions that are simplified as going bad. One is the obvious going bad, that is the tea actually gets moldy and can't be drunk. But a very confusing thing happens to some tea lovers. They seal their tea up really well. They don't live in a very humid environment. But they find out that after a few weeks or months, their tea is moldy. This often makes them feel that the seal wasn't good enough. The humid air must have touched the tea. But to be honest, whether you live in Montreal or New York, the humid weather over here in North America that we chat about is not really that humid for tea at all. And it is unlikely to be in the zone that would cause your tea to go moldy. The real reason is that there's too much moisture in the tea leaves themselves and it's well sealed. In fact, if it hadn't have been sealed so well, it probably wouldn't have gone moldy or at least wouldn't have gone moldy so fast. What this really reflects is that the tea was not made to a basic quality standard. Tea ensures its long life by reducing the water amount in the tea leaves to a proper ratio. And of course, tea has natural antibacterial properties that make it less susceptible to going moldy. China has very clear standard for the water ratio in the ready to sell tea, according to the tea's type and in some cases even for a specific given tea. When the tea is too wet like this, it is either purposely to make the tea heavier for sale, or it's an unintentional accident and the tea producer can't meet the basic standard of making tea, and the tea merchant was not able to identify this issue while sourcing the tea. Either way, a very unpleasant experience for the consumer. Another kind of tea going bad is a better scenario because the tea is still drinkable, but it's just not as good as it used to be or aromatic. If it happens after quite a while, it's normal. But if it's just been a couple months and the tea tastes significantly duller, it's another indicator of a quality issue. The yen cha I mentioned earlier, those will often have this issue. That's why it's better to drink those up right away. However, there's a way to help in this case, which is roasting. Using a gentle heat to reactivate the flavor and the aroma of the tea. You don't have to purchase something special to do it. An essential oil burner would work, or even put it in a pan on the stove on low heat for a bit. But you really have to watch the heat level closely if you go with a stove. If you call yourself a tea head, you must know of the ultra long life of tea, aging. Some teas will improve with age, Pu'ar for example. White tea and oolong tea are also popular choices when it comes to aging. One of the most talked about topics on aging is whether to use a tea humidor or not. A humidor ensures the tea is stored in an environment of controlled and consistent temperature and or humidity. The concept is inherited from cigars and wine. When introducing people to tea tasting, wine, cigars and whiskey are often used as comparisons because they have many similarities when it comes to the art of tasting. And by relating them, it's easier for people to accept the concept of tea tasting. However, tea is not a cigar or wine. So when it comes to aging, can tea still follow wine's aging traditions and practices? Well first, let's just quickly review why wine or cigars require consistent humidity and temperature. A proper temperature is more key to wine storage as it can speed up or slow down the maturity of wine and ultimately affect the quality of it. Humidity is of indirect importance as it can affect the cork and compromise the seal, which could result in ruining the wine as well. Looking at cigars, which are more concerned about humidity, if it's too low, the tobacco will become dry and flaky, turning into almost a kind of kindling, losing essential oils and flavor. Too humid, the tobacco might go moldy. Temperature plays a secondary role in this case because it affects relative humidity. I don't know much about wine or cigars, so if what I said wasn't right, please don't hesitate to correct me by commenting down below. But now, let's turn back to tea. The changes that occur when aging tea happen in many ways. Enzymatic or oxidation, anaerobic or aerobic. Take Pu'ar for example, since it's the tea that started the trend of purposely and commercially aging tea. The wrap or the packaging of Pu'ar is paper or bamboo, so it's not sealed. Having some contact with air is important for tea aging. Water is also essential for many chemical and microbial reactions in the tea's aging. 
So humidity is also very important. Too high, and yes indeed, the tea will get moldy. When it's too low, it will significantly slow down the aging process of the tea. But unlike cigars, low humidity won't damage the tea. As for temperature, as long as you don't cook or freeze the tea and it's around room temperature, you won't destroy your tea. It's just a matter of the aging speed. All this blah 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 is just to address two main points. First, temperature and humidity are both key players in tea's aging. Second, consistency is not as important for tea as it is for cigars or wine because the nature of tea makes it more resistant to environmental fluctuations. So a humidor is always a safe play for those who love aging tea. It's a worry-free, set-and-forget way to do it. For industrial-level tea companies who purchase huge amounts of tea for aging, it's a great way to guard your investment, low risk. Many have suggested that the relative humidity should be lower than 75% and the temperature should be below 45 degrees Celsius as a general guideline. What's the best combination? The right speed of aging? Is it 25 degrees and 70%? Or is it 35 degrees and 50%? Which is better? Well, that's a question you have to answer for yourself. However, every coin has two sides. But the delightful and surprising tasting elements from aging are what? <laughs> but the, that's, what, that's what I can. The safe play also means a rather predictable taste. But the delightful and surprising tasting elements that come from aging are what greatly improve the value as well as the tasting experience of the tea. For example, our, one of our previous Supreme Teas, which is sold out now, is a Lao Cha Tua from the 80s that features distinctive peppery and floral notes. This is really rare in a Pu'ar, making it a one-of-a-kind exceptional tea. All the pinnacle antique Pu'ar are naturally aged as well. The beauty of aging tea in a natural environment is correctly considered risky, but mistakenly assumed to be undesired. The temperature and humidity swing that happen naturally are actually quite interesting. What happens is that the tea goes through cycles with nature. In the summer, it's hot and it's humid, encouraging enzymatic and microbial activities in the tea leaves. The tea goes into a fast aging phase. But when the winter rolls around, temperature lowers, the humidity goes down, and it slows down the process and sucks some of that moisture out of the tea. So the tea has been aging fast in the high temperature and high humidity environment. Then it has a time to relax, prevents it from crossing the line and becoming too moldy. It acts like a natural protection plan in case the tea absorbs too much moisture in the summer. It gives the tea time to dry out. And don't worry, aging is still happening slowly. It's not totally stopped as long as it's not frozen. In some regions, this weather swing is not as obvious as regions with four clear seasons, but there are still some weather differences throughout the year. The downside of this way of aging is that you need to keep an eye on the tea, not necessarily very often, but if, for example, you're having an extreme summer of 40 degrees C and 90% humidity for weeks on end, you might want to check on the tea or put up a dehumidifier for the tea, and maybe even for yourself. But most North American homes are temperature regulated, so it's really not much of a concern. In the end, to age tea in a humidor or not is really a question of personal preference. So be sure to share with us and fellow tea lovers how you age your tea. I know some of you have really awesome creative ways of doing it. After hearing all this, there will definitely be questions like, how do I know which tea is good for aging? And how can I tell if my tea has too much moisture in it? These are variations on the most asked question we receive, which is, how do I know the quality of a tea? They don't have a quick and easy answer. It requires solid knowledge, extensive experience, and a strong ability to connect the taste of the tea with its quality and its information. The best way would be to choose a trusted vendor like what we always do for many other domains of our life. Or an organic approach is simply do it. Forget about whether this tea is worth aging or not. Just go ahead and age it if you want. Sample it as time passes. And if it turns out the taste goes downward, then you know that tea wasn't, so, wasn't such the right tea to age. On the other hand, you might find a pleasant surprise. I mean, why not? What do you got to lose? That's it for today's video. You know the drill. 
Give us a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and share the video and our channel with your fellow tea lovers. If you're interested in knowing when we post a new video, please click that subscribe button and the notification bell right beside it. Until next time, keep steeping!